welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan. We're exactly a week away from the union budget and the buzz and excitement is slowly starting to pick up. Will this budget deliver on the government's growth promise? Will this budget take the growth agenda forward? We at CNBC TV 18 are calling it the now or never budget. We believe this is a window of opportunity for the Modi government to try and accelerate its growth agenda. But to take us through what we can expect or should expect from the budget and what the budget can deliver, joining us Titans of Indian Industry here at the Confederation of Indian Industry at the CII headquarters in New Delhi. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the CNBC TV 18 special. I know CII does these dipstick surveys on the mood of the economy. So let me try and do one right here at the start of this show. How many of you believe that things are a lot better at this point in time when it comes to the economy than six months ago? Okay. So... The majority believes that we're in a better position as far as the economy is concerned. So, Mansina, you didn't raise your hand, so I'm going to start by you're halfway there. So I'm going to I'm going, I'm going to start by asking you. I'm going to start by asking you. I'm going to put you in the spot, and you've got you've got the microphone. <laughs> you've got the microphone right there. So uh, this side of the table believes that we're in a better shape as far as the economy is concerned. You're sort of in the middle. Uh, take us through why. So I think, Shireen. Um uh, if you look at the overall situation right now, uh, the growth numbers are pretty much as they were six months ago. You know, we are sort of in the middle sevens or thereabouts. And keep in mind, your question was, are we better than we were yeah. uh, six months ago? Uh, having said that, the government has been doing a lot of uh, what you might call cleanup activities mm -hmm. in the economy. Uh, the banking system is clearly the most important of that area. So uh, at, at the same time, they've also been doing a lot of work on a number of key sectors, like roads, for example, railways, the work continues. In my sector, renewable energy and the power sector more generally also okay. uh, work continues. So I think what is happening is that we're getting closer to the point where we'll start taking off in terms of the growth dynamic. But And so therefore, clearly, we're six months closer to it. Okay. But are we seeing a specific pickup right now? So we're still two quarters away from a lift off, you're, you're Most saying? Most likely, but at least we're getting closer to it, which okay. is why ambiguity in terms of are we better off today? Yes, we are going to be better off in six months from now, and we're heading in that direction. Okay. But specifically, are we better off in terms of better numbers? Maybe not necessarily yet. Okay. Atish Shriram, let me come to you now in terms of what this budget will really mean for the economy. As I said, we at CNBC TV 18 are calling it the now or never budget. How crucial is this budget going to be to stimulate growth? I think this budget is going to be very important, no doubt, like any other budget, frankly speaking. But considering that we've had two years of poor monsoon, we are still in a 7.3, 7.4% GDP growth. Uh, on a world scale, we are the fastest growing as we are today. And I think the realization has come across the board that there is a genuine need to try to give a further fillip mm. to investments, fillip to consumption, and Philip to the agri sector. Okay. I think all these three are getting addressed. On the agri sector, we've seen in the last couple of weeks, mm. whether it's the insurance scheme or whether it's a couple of other schemes which have been initiated. I think the infrastructure sector is getting a tremendous push. Okay. There have been talks going around that uh, the government will not get fixated by 3.9% mm. of the deficit and mm. can even you know, continue at that level instead of reducing it for the sake of investments. Okay. And I think that's the right thing to do. Okay, you know, that's a good point to do another dipstick poll here uh, because there is a divided house on whether the government should slip on its fiscal deficit target. I believe most people believe that 3.9% for this financial year will be met, but the question is FI17, where the target is 3.5%. Should they slip a little bit to try and stimulate growth? That's the big divide at this point in time. How many of you believe that a slippage of a minor amount will be tolerable or would, should, should actually be something that the government should look at? very desirable to do. Very desirable. Let me, let me ask you, Rajiv Mimani, because you haven't put your hand up and you're not clearly in the camp that believes we should stray away from the fiscal deficit number. Uh, you believe that we should stick to 3.5%. Yeah, I'd just like to disagree with Ajay Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, uh, there is, you know, uh, given where oil prices are, uh, given what's happening in the global economy, uh, I, I personally think you need a very strong... Uh, and a credible balance sheet. So mm -hmm. I, I don't think any, there is any reason for saying that why 
India should be slipping away from the so I'll, I'll give you the now. argument on the other side we've got the OROP we've got the seventh pay commission which is going to add to the stress and we've got the need for the government to try and pump prime the economy by way of additional allocation perhaps to the rural sector infrastructure and so on and so forth so maybe it's a good idea to try and pump prime and miss this you know, depth, the target if need be I, I think the the numbers on pay commission if you look at that you know I think 25 30 thousand crores are going to come back in the form of taxes and most of that money hopefully will go into either consumption or you know housing uh, you know housing sector and everything so in many ways india has india has it's still a, from a consumption standpoint this will give a 40 to 50000 crore lift okay from a consumption standpoint which i don't think is bad i i think that that's right and i don't think it will based on the balance sheet will impact hmm. but i think in 12 months 18 months time it will have a positive impact similarly for over op okay i strongly believe that the message that the government has given and in today's circumstances where india has all the things in a very adversarial global environment mm. india has almost all things going on its in its favor right now whether it's technology whether it's demographics whether oil it's oil prices commodity prices oil prices i think we should stay clear and if you look at the global world today mm. no country in the world has higher fiscal deficit cumulative fiscal deficit in india i'm no meaningful country except brazil sure and then you will have the Uday scheme. So yeah. if you add the central plus the state fiscal deficit, Absolutely. we are already we're looking at 6 to 7 percent right. because Uday is shifting right. the, this thing. So India is after Brazil, India is the highest cumulative central and state fiscal deficit. Okay. I don't want to go there. Fair point. Uh, Vinay Chatterjee, you always come prepared with bucket lists in terms of what you expect from the budget and especially as far as the infrastructure sector is concerned, uh, which uh, as Ajay Sriram pointed out was, is likely to be a big focus area or will likely to be continued as a big focus area in this budget as well. What is it that you would like specifically uh, in this budget to try and stimulate infrastructure growth even further? I'm going to request someone to hand over the microphone to you. You know, I, I thought I'd uh, share with you five points, but I wouldn't. I, I knew you'd be ready. Uh, but I'd call them buckets, <laughs> just so that, you know, I'm in sympathetic resonance with you, as they say. But uh, in my five buckets, the first is that for the infrastructure sector, we are expecting two engines to kick in, the public expenditure engine and the PPP engine, the, the private capital engine. On public expenditure, the debate has often been black and white. Does it mean uh, a relaxation of the fisc? Uh, the important thing is, remember, the contribution of the budget to infrastructure year by year as a percentage of total infra spend is going down. Mm. And it is expected to go down hugely going forward because of very creative off-budget vehicles sure. like the National Investment and Infrastructure Fund, fund yeah. like the Railways Raising Funds from LIC World Bank, like Mr. Gadkari has growing toll, uh, high, yeah. uh, toll revenues. So lots of creative financing mm. for, for public expenditure off is budget. happening off-budget. Sure. So therefore I'm saying on public expenditure, we are certainly expecting a push on public expenditure. Mm. We are, we, I be, looking at the smoke signals emanating from North Block, mm. uh, we think it's, it's going to be a slant towards rural infrastructure, mm. irrigation, rural roads and rural electricity connection. There's going to be a slant, undoubtedly. We are certainly going to see a few more creative ideas on off-budget financing that will reduce the stress of the FM on having to push everything into a, a fiscal relaxation, uh, stroke, discipline uh, problem. Uh, we are going to see, we are already seeing an uptick. You know, the reason you found many hands going up, including mine, when mm. you asked the first question, is we are already noticing an uptick on roads in the yeah. power sector, on transmission, distribution, and solar. Uh, we are seeing the beginnings of an uptick on railway contracts. Okay. And we are seeing an uptick in urban infrastructure, whether it's metro rail or with mm. this smart city consciousness. Okay. A lot many cities are come up with, uh, you know, are coming up with urban infrastructure. And uh, <clears throat> my, my last point is that since much of it is going to be public expenditure driven, hmm. uh, we've kind of charted the processes. You know, it takes about 18 to 20 months from the time you think of a public sector right. project or a public investment yeah. project till groundbreaking hmm. when Vipin comes in with his hmm. PCBs. That process takes 18 to 20 months. Hmm. And if you work back, and I believe they started work in September 2014, right. three months after that. So, so you're pretty much echoing what Suman said, that and we're getting closer we to getting that. Closer. Some sectors are already demonstrating an uptick, and many other sectors are poised to do so. So I am betting on the fact that in this fiscal, uh, we are actually going to see far better numbers coming up, and a sense of confidence, but the most important one is we need a strong sense of confidence coming back in PPP, and I really, really hope that the finance minister and his team implement some of the... Vijay Kelkar committee yes, recommendations. some of them are not easy. Some of the recommendations of the Kelkar committee 
will require the government to chew on the bit for quite some time, mm. but this is the time that they once again got to get the PPP. Okay, Vipin Sondi, very quickly, uh, just come in on the points that uh, Vinayak made as well, specifically as far as the infrastructure sector is concerned, and give us your wish list as well. Roads and highways. I think that started to move because on the ground we are seeing movement of roads and highways, highways equipment. And roads and highways is safe because there's a tolling opportunity. Mm. But rural roads, I think, definitely needs a special incentive so that they can get easier access. And you to believe fund. that maybe, or would you, do, would you believe that that should be the focus area for the government in the budget? Well, that's, since it started moving, we must move because rural linkages are going to be very important. And I think, I think Ajay mentioned that. I think irrigation, rural roads, anything to do with that, higher income in rural mm. India will lead to more consumption and further, let's say, physical okay. connectivity okay. with India. All right, so there's consensus that infrastructure, uh, specifically rural infrastructure, and of course the government is likely to allocate more capital to schemes like the Sichai Yojana, which was announced in the previous budget, and take the uh, agri-story forward. But Sumit Mazumdar, uh, let me ask you, because this is also the budget which will, in that sense, indicate the move to the road to 25, if I could call it that, uh, the corporate tax rate coming down to 25%. The roadmap is a four-year roadmap. Do you expect at least a 1% cut in corporate tax this budget? You know, uh, I would definitely expect some, some cut because if you're going to do it in four years, you know, you've got to start now. But the only thing I would expect that they do is as they remove the allowances, it must be in tandem with the reduction of the taxes. Mm. You can't go one before the other. If you start reducing the allowances and not the tax commensurately, there would be a problem. So it has to be, because when you talk about the, you know, the effective tax rate, it is taking both into account. Mm. So it's very important that the two of them work in tandem. But for a whole bunch of sectors, the effective tax rate is actually lower than 25%. What, what CI is actually recommending is 22%, mm. is what CI is recommending. But, 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 the, but uh, the finance minister had announced 25, 25 but yeah. we are working with them because we believe that the actual effective rate is a lot lower and we should look at, look at something lower. Okay, uh, very quickly before I take a break, Rajiv Memani, you want to come in on that, this balance of exemptions versus uh, uh, bringing the corporate tax rate down. Do you believe that given the climate, the economic climate, we may see the government push back a little bit on doing away with uh, some of the big ticket exemptions? Yeah, I think uh, my sense is they, they should probably announce the roadmap on exemptions. Uh, I think some of them which lapse, where there's a sunset clause and which lapses in 2017, I have a view that they may not uh, renew those uh, for next year. The, uh, the ones relating to SEZ and some of the others where there is no sunset clause, mm. I think they'll have to take a view whether they continue with that exemption or they don't continue with, uh, with that exemption. If they do decide not to continue, then they should announce what the sunset clause would be. Uh, the, two, the, the biggest item there is, is the depreciation, which is more of a timing difference, is the higher depreciation, uh, and also something around R&D. Uh, so I think how they deal with uh, depreciation, that will be interesting to see, given okay. especially the emphasis on make in India and manufacturing. And on R&D globally, I think there is lots of countries are giving, and I think enough evidence has been shown, lots of countries, maybe in different ways, mm. are incentivizing R&D in some form or the other. So I don't think government can straight away pull out the entire R&D. They may re reconfigure the scheme a bit, uh, given what's happening in different parts of the world. Okay. So to answer your question, I think I'm pretty certain that they'll reduce the corporate tax rate by 1%. They will take away some incentives, which, which were due to expire in any case. They may not renew it, and I think they will probably announce a definitive roadmap uh, for saying which are the incentives that will stay and for how long will they stay or what okay. will be the character going forward. All right. On that note, we are going to have to take a quick commercial break, but come back to us. We continue our conversation on what Budget 2016 could hold for Corporate India. We're coming to you from the Confederation of Indian Industry in the National Capital. Back after a break.